Okay, so we're, we'll be Francois Le Maire. Um, he'll speak on new development and applications of integration of differential fractions. Thank you. So I'll be talking about integration of differential fractions. Uh, so it's related to differential algebra, but there won't be very difficult techniques behind that. So even if you're not familiar with differential algebra, you should get the idea from the talk. That, that's what I want. So first, uh, it's a joint work with uh, François Boullier, who is a researcher in France, in Lille, and I'm also from uh, Lille. And uh, it's a joint work with uh, Georg Jürgensberger and Marcus Rosenkranz. Sorry, yeah. the R is missing. That's Georg Jürgensberger. And I'd like to thank uh, Alexei for the invitation for this conference. So I'll be presenting a, a differential algebra algorithm. So most of you in know the fundators of uh, differential algebra. And uh, the talk is about differential fractions. So usually in, in uh, differential algebra, you consider differential polynomials. And here, we'll just take fractions of differential polynomials. And, uh, let me show you the uh, notations that will be used. So in the talk, uh, you will see u, v, those are functions of t, like t, like the time. And uh, the dot means the derivative. This notation is really is used a lot in control theory. So the dot is the derivation, and uh, u, v are functions. So this is the differential fraction in two variables, u and v. So what is the algorithm? So the algorithm is called integrate, and it's going to integrate <coughs> differential fractions, but imagine that it's not always possible to integrate a differential fraction. So the algorithm takes a differential fraction f as an input, and a derivation, so in the talk, just think as of the derivation of being the derivation with respect to the time, t. And it also takes a ranking. We'll see later why it's needed. And this algorithm returns a unique couple of two fractions, f0 and f1, such that the short fraction f is the sum of f0 plus the derivative of f1. And here, f0 has a special name. <coughs> will uh, satisfy the, the strong property, which is that F0 is a functional fraction. So the functional term was used before uh, by, uh, in, uh, by Inge on uh, the same topics for polynomials. So we, we kept the same name. So think of the F0 part as the non-integrable part. That's what you cannot integrate. So it just remains. So let's take uh, an example, so u prime over u square is obviously the derivative of minus 1 over u, so in that case there is no functional part, and if in this example I've hidden a, a non-integrable part, u prime over u, and there is a derivative of u prime plus 2 square over 2. So almost uh, obvious here because u second here is multiplied by u which is simplified by the denominator. So in some, some sense you have to clean a bit the, the, the fraction to find what is integrable and what is not. And here u prime over u is really in our sense non-integrable <coughs> because we want to consider any fractions. You could integrate that with a logarithm but you would go outside, outside differential fractions. So we keep that as the non-integrable part. And once you have that, uh, you can iterate the, the process and still try to integrate the F1 part and so on. So you obtain a, another version, which is an iterated uh, integration. So you still have a, a, a fraction F as an input. And you can decompose it in a unique way as some polynomial part. Here, the polynomial part uh, depending on the time, t, 
plus F0 plus delta of F1 and etc. to delta to the k Fk. And uh, in that case, so each Fi is a functional fraction, so it's something that cannot be integrated anymore. And so the decomposition, I already said that, is unique. And more, in a more mathematical way, you could say that uh, the space, the vector space of differential fraction is decomposed as a, an infinite direct sum of the vector space cons, uh, corresponding to that sum, to those terms. So let's take the same <laughs> example as before. The decomposition is different. Since here, you see that we could detect that there is a second derivative of u. And also, you can see that the t is in this uh, polynomial part. And you might wonder why, why we put this polynomial part. In fact, the reason is that uh, t is very easy to integrate. You can integrate t, you get t squared. But you can still integrate it, uh, t squared over 2. And you could integrate it indefinitely. So the algorithm will never stop. So you have to clean, in fact, f and retrieve the polynomial part t to prevent it from being integrated indefinitely. So what is the, the context of this work? Uh, so first, what I presented in the previous slide is a, a generalization of a similar work we did in ISAC last year. And basically, we had the same, uh, uh, the same thing, but we didn't have the, the uniqueness of uh, the decomposition. I will show an example. Show some examples about that. And initially, it was an application to parameters estimation that I will uh, explain also after. And uh, we can consider this as the first step of building integral differential algebras. So that's something we would like to do with Georg uh, and Marcus. And uh, we believe that it could be applied to for computing first integrals and uh, also decreasing the size of the fractions. Usually when you integrate fractions, the size tends to decrease a lot. So that could be used as a compression method. So let's see slightly bigger examples. So here, x1 and x2 are functions of t. And uh, if the input fraction is the derivative of another fraction, then the algorithm detects it and uh, on this example, you see the result is this one, which is much smaller than <coughs> this. Let's take basic one, basic example. And here it's only polynomials, but uh, even if with, with polynomial, there are some uh, things to explain. So f is x1 dot, x2 dot. And then I introduce this ranking. So the ranking is a total, a special total ordering on the unknown function and its derivatives. So here the order is that the ordering that x2 is the smallest one, x prime 2 comes next after, etc. And then only after all the x2 have been ordered, you introduce x1, x1 dot, and so on. So in that case, the output would be that one. So a non-integrable part plus uh, the integrated part. And you see that it's completely symmetric. I could, f is symmetric, but the ranking is not symmetric. I could uh, exchange x1 and x2 in the ordering, and then if I do that, the output will be changed as well. So if I do it, let me, so you should see that the 1 and 2 are just swaps. And I can give you one explanation why we get this result. Uh, basically, the algorithm looks for the highest derivative, which, is, which we call the leader. So here in F, the leading derivative is x2 dot, because the ordering is here. And what we do is we try to remove that term, <coughs> get rid of that term by introducing a new monomial, which is that one, x2, x1 dot, and 
differentiating it. So if you differentiate x2, x1 dot, you will get x2 dot, x1 dot, that will cancel this term. But you also get x2, x1 dot dot. And that part will be, in fact, the non-integrable part. And finally, if you consider this ranking, which is an orderly ranking, so they are ordered using the, <coughs> the order of derivation of the derivative, then the output is just this. You cannot, don't, you don't do anything. So let's see an application of uh, these algorithms for parameter estimation. Uh, so very roughly, uh, the differential elimination can uh, help in parameter estimations to transform a nonlinear square problem into a linear one. But that's very a harsh statement. It's um, a lot more subtle in general. So we worked with uh, Lilian Denis Vidal uh, and Guylaine Jolie Branchas in Noiré uh, 10 years ago, and they were, they, were com they were doing computation by hand. And, uh, Finally, we succeeded in doing the computations with, a, with an algorithm, which is the integrate algorithm. And using these techniques, we, we could uh, show on a recent paper, which is submitted to CASC, it's written just here, which is accepted to CASC, sorry. And uh, it shows that those techniques can enhance the parameter estimation. So let me explain what it is on an example. So this is uh, um, an example involving two compartments, one and two. So usually one here could be the blood, the blood in your, in your body, and two could be an organ, like your, your kidney. And <coughs> there is a, an amount of drug in you, and uh, the, the drug has a concentration, which is denoted x1, and x2, and x1 is the concentration in the blood, x2 in the kidney. And the drug can travel from the blood to the kidney, goes back, and also the drug can be eliminated with uh, some constant, using some, uh, some expression involving uh, the parameters which are here. And we say that the compartment 1 or x1 is absurd because we can actually make measurement of it. And uh, x2 is considered not absurd. And here that would, that would request to take a part of your kidney. And uh, so the doctors they would, if they can, they will uh, avoid that. Okay, so you know, basically, you know the value of x1 in the time, but you don't know x2. So let's see the equations of the model. So that's a dynamical system, not a big one, but it's, it's non-linear because of this term. And here I write y equal x1. It's a short way of writing that the, the thing that we can measure is x1. And if you perform elimination on this, you can retrieve a differential equation in y only that you know. And that's called the input-output equation. Basically, in this example, there is no input. But in general, there is an input. Here, there is only one output, y. So what can you do with this differential, uh, with the input-output equation? Well, if you divide it by its leading coefficient, it can be written as an interesting sum here and uh, decomposed in uh, three terms. And uh, we'll see why this decomposition is useful. So basically, that's what integrate, the integrate algorithm computes. Yeah. So what can you do with the input-output equation? What is the motivation? So if you look at the colors, what you know is the magenta expressions involves y and its derivative. And what you don't know is the expression is in blue, which are the parameter blocks. So they are expressions involving the parameters that you are looking for. So if you have different value for y in the time, 
what you can do is estimate the derivative of y, y prime, y second, and for each time you can write, at each time you can write uh, a linear equation in the blocks. So you rename the blocks, these are unknowns, and then at each time you get a linear equation. If you do that for many different times, you obtain a system of linear equations, and by uh, by linear uh, by uh, uh, I just forgot. Uh, can can, can, yes. can <laughs> somebody help me? Linear uh, system uh, least, least, least square. Least square. <laughs> Sorry, by least square method. <laughs> You can. It's written, yeah. But I'm not reading my slides. <laughs> That's why. I just see the, the overall idea going, coming out. So by linear square, you linear least square method, you can uh, estimate the block parameters, and then you have to estimate the parameters themselves, which is another story. Which is a, and it's not linear, and it's a hard problem. Uh, in practice. The people, they don't like to estimate the derivative because if you have a noisy signal, then it's very difficult to estimate properly the derivative. You can do filtering techniques, but it's, uh, it's not easy. And some people, they prefer to integrate the signal instead of derivative the signal. But here we have derivative, so we need to get rid of those derivatives. It's precisely what you can obtain by integrating the IO in the input output equation. So you will integrate this equation hoping to remove as many derivatives as possible. And on our example, in fact that works perfectly. And uh, you can see that uh, the, the input output can, can be uh, written in that way, and there are no derivative of y. But it, it's because of the example. I mean, a y prime could be trapped into an expression here, and you could not remove it. <coughs> so once you have that, you simply integrate twice, and then you only have integral uh, equations, and then you can uh, perform the, the same uh, linear least square method and estimate. So now the blocks are different, the, the new blocks are those three blocks. What I didn't mention is that this work well if we assume that the parameter at the denominator is known. We don't know yet how to how to, to do that if you don't know the parameter on the denominator because that won't yield to a, a linear system. So do you know how much time I have uh, left? Mm -hmm. 10 minutes? Nine. Nine? Okay. That's perfect. So let me show you a comparison be between the, I call it the previous integrate, so the integrate version we had last year, and uh, the previous uh, specification of integrate was this one. Uh, it rewrites the fraction f as, as f0 plus derivative of f1 with the property that the non integrable part is zero if and only if f is a derivative of some fraction. And in some sense, this that was the best we could do last year. We could not really give a name to this f0 part, a proper mathematical definition. And uh, you see, for this, this definition is not enough to define properly f0. And, uh, F0 was actually only defined as the output of an algorithm, which is not really satisfactory in a mathematical point of view. So now uh, we have a proper mathematical definition of this. And uh, on some uh, special examples, the integrate algorithm was not behaving uh, as we wanted. For example, take this fraction f, so the first term not so easy to integrate. But the second one, you see that it's the derivative of 1 over u plus 1, up to a sign. So previously, when, you, when we gave this fraction, 
to the algorithm. The algorithm was just returning f. It could not split, in fact, the two, the two different parts. And you may say that, OK, maybe it's not too bad, because uh, in any way, the fraction is not integrable. But what, because of this, we could give some examples where you take, for example, another function g, which has a minus 1 over u prime u. And this term, which is not integrable, will cancel the other one. So at the end, the previous version of integrate was just returning f. It was also returning g. It was not doing anything. But when you launched uh, integrate on f plus g, then it was doing some computations. Because those two terms they were collapsing, they were, they were cancelled, and then integrate was able to detect the derivative of the function. And uh, now the new version is, uh, is better because it rewrites in a new unique way uh, the function f. So we have, in some sense, a direct sum of vector space. So, uh, so as a consequence, the new version we have is additive in the sense that if you compute integrate of f plus g, that's just the sum of the two calls of uh, Integrate. So on this example, the new version behave, behaves as, as we want. It can detect that non-integrable part plus the derivative of minus 1 of, of uh, u plus 1. And for g, g does the same. And, <coughs> and then the sum commutes with calling the algorithm. So I can give a, a few hints about how the algorithm works for, for the fractions. So uh, remember, so we, we need a ranking for the ranking is an input of the algorithm as well, because the output depends on the ranking. And uh, so as I said before, the leader is the highest derivative which occurs in the fraction. So if you take a fraction take uh, any fraction f, if you differentiate it, then what you get is has a very special structure. And for example, if v is the leader of f, the fraction has this shape, it's v dot, so the, the derivative of v, times the partial derivative of f with respect to the leader. And plus some other terms which involve derivatives which are less than v dot. So that gives you uh, a certain pattern that f dot must satisfy. And the algorithm, in some sense, uh, is uh, working a bit by pattern matching. So it starts, imagine it starts with a fraction g, and try to see if g is a derivative of some fraction f. So g, if g is a derivative, should have that, that pattern. So you can even identify the leader of G, which should be that one. It should occur linearly uh, only. And, uh, and in front of it, you should get the derivative of F with respect to V. So you identify, you guess what is V. Then you can try to integrate with respect to V the coefficient which is in front. And Everything that does not follow the pattern, you just put it in the non-integrable part. And that's where the difficulty is. It's to properly define what is a non-integrable part. And, uh, and uh, that was uh, not <coughs> basically the main result is this. It was to define what is really a functional uh, fraction. And uh, the key ingredient, in fact, is uh, using elementary fractions. So at some point, we need to compute irreducible, one irreducible factor of the denominator to be able to, to obtain, in fact, the corresponding uh, elementary fraction. And then we work on it. And 
there are different criteria that can tell you if it should be put in the functional part or not. But it's quite technical. I, if I had uh, showed you that, you would be dead by now, I think. So, <laughs> so I prefer to show you why it's interesting and then you can, you can have a look at the paper. So, uh, and yes, it's surprising, the algorithm was surprisingly difficult. And compared to the polynomial case, there are many, many things that are unpredictable. When, when you add fractions, they are, they, many cancellations can occur that you don't expect. And uh, so the leaders, they can, they can vanish. So it took us really a long time to, to make it clear. And uh, so it's implemented, uh, the previous version is implemented in uh, BLAD libraries, which is a, uh, a C library developed by Francois Boulier. Lee. So this library is open source. You can use it uh, directly, or you can use it through the differential algebra package in Maple. That's an interface for, for the black libraries. And uh, the new version, for the moment, is only coded in Maple. But it, it could be uh, implemented in black as well. So as a conclusion, what, there are many things that remains to, to be doing. First, uh, I didn't talk much about that. When you when you want to integrate a fraction, maybe it's easier if you divide the fraction before by some term before in integrating, and that might give you a better output. For example, if you want to reduce the order of derivation, some term which are a kind of integrated factor can be can be interesting to find. But we have not investigated that for the moment uh, to see if it's uh, if it could be used to compress the expression also in a computer in a computational point of view that could be very interesting because uh, the output of differential eliminations they tend to be just uh, enormous but maybe they are easy to compress just by integrating the small parts uh, that's a PhD thesis, uh, in fact, maybe. So that's a huge uh, problem to look at. And uh, also, uh, investigate an, an elimination theory for integral differential polynomial fractions, basically extending the differential algebra to, by introducing uh, integral uh, operators. So it's, it's not very precise for the moment, but uh, we Marcus and Georg have been working on this subject, but with no, not in a full uh, uh, context of differential algebra. So a lot of work to do there. Also. Okay, thank you. So you say this uh, direct sum decomposition depends on the rank. Yes. Uh, is it the same, let's say, if you take two orderly uh, rankings, does it change even then? If I, if I take two different orderly rankings? Yes. Uh, I guess I, I guess it can, yes. Okay. Because uh, inside the order, even with the same order, um, the leader can change. So uh, I expect that it's it should be different. Actually, there was a previous slide in your dynamical system you had said there is a step where you need to know the, uh, the particular parameter k of e. Yeah. So, so, so uh, how do you go about uh, uh, finding that one or determining which one is? Uh, because it is in the denominator. Um, so it appears in the denominator, so it cannot be, read, uh, cannot be written in blue, it cannot be factored. <laughs> so, so you determine so the cost of it, okay, that's fine. <laughs> I mean, you could. <laughs> so not all parameters are free. Yes, um, maybe there is a way, but uh, at least we, we, you would not get a linear system. And it's much more 
complicated here. You have to, for example, you have to integrate if you have to integrate a signal Y, which is known. Using a parameter inside the integration, uh, it's uh, it's not really numeric. <coughs> and you you would get this KE everywhere. And I expect that it gives you a huge fraction in KE if you add it, if you, if you make a numerical integration. So it's not clear. Do you say a word about the connection uh, between this work and the elimination theory in integral differential algebra? Ah, it's a... Uh, yeah, yes, yeah, so I don't need that. Uh, uh, when you are manipulating expressions with a... Uh, well, when, you, when you have differential polynomials, if you, it's very easy to add them and check, for example, that uh, some quantity is zero or not. Right? Just expand the polynomials, and then if it's not zero, that means that it's not a zero polynomial. When you have integration derivations, you might have many terms, but the sum, the sum could be zero, but you could not see it because uh, you, you need to do extra uh, computation. So, if uh, I mean, it's easy to hide a zero using integrals and derivations because you have to make some. You you will need a normal form to express the result. And you see my point? Yes. But then, all polynomials are needed, not rational functions, right? Or even with polynomials, there is still a problem when you have integrals. You need normal forms. That's what uh, Marcus and Georg did. And uh, with fractions, that's the same uh, spirit. So. Why, why is it connected? Because uh, the fraction can be written in a, in a normal form. So we, we got a bit of understanding of, uh, of uh, writing a, fra a fraction. And uh, we think that may help later to simplify expressions into normal form when you introduce uh, integral operator. I said 2004, 2004, I think. Uh, later in the uh, DNC paper, we already done similar thing for, for polynomials. Because we got the paper on decomposition of nonlinear differential polynomials. It's so one, one step one step of the algorithm we did the integrate integration of polynomials, uh, polynomials not fractions. That's the remark. Okay. Okay, let's let's move on. Uh, thank you very much again.